I'm Kelly Engelman. I'm a nurse practitioner. I've been in practice um, for 14 years. Um, I am currently pursuing a master's degree in metabolic and nutritional medicine from the University of South Florida, as well as a fellowship through the Anti-Aging Medicine Society. Um, they're a cohabited uh, program, so I'm doing both at the same time. And I tell you, that is fueling my passion for what we can do um, with this country, and especially here in Mississippi. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about um, this journey that we're on, this journey of a lifetime. Um, when I first started my practice 14 years ago, I was responsible for developing an osteoporosis program. It was a women's health clinic down on the coast, and I would sit with women and I would hear the same story over and over. They would essentially all say the same thing. I was doing just great until I hit 50, and then my body just fell apart. Those words haunted me. I would sit and I would, I would think that doesn't make any sense. How can someone be perfectly healthy and then all of a sudden at age 50 have high blood pressure, diabetes, hormonal imbalances, osteoarthritis? That made no sense to me. About the same time I was watching my mom as she was aging. She was hitting 50. She'd always been healthy, the picture of health, great muscle tone. She started developing gastric issues, um, high blood pressure, and her body composition started to change. She became overweight. So seeing my mom go through that and seeing these women telling me the same story over and over really has fueled me to, to get the education that I have in order to be able to help patients in a different way. So let's talk about this trip of a lifetime. Most of us are well on our way, or her trip of a lifetime. We didn't just start today. So if you were gonna plan a trip of a lifetime, would you just go and expect every day to just happen? Probably not. You'd probably spend some time planning and thinking about what you want to do on your trip of a lifetime, how you want to spend your time and how you want to spend your money, right? I don't think we would go on an African safari without the consult of a guide. I don't think we would go on a hundred foot scuba dive trip without the consult of a master diver. But yet, we, this is how we approach our health care. We just go about our day expecting that every day we're going to wake up and feel okay. And when we don't, we just say, well, maybe tomorrow will be a better day. So think about this. How do you want to feel when you're on your trip of a lifetime and you see that amazing sunset? How do you want to feel? How do you want to feel when you ski down that mountain? Or when you climb that mountain? Or when you sit back and sip a glass of wine? How do you want to feel when you see that amazing sunset? or be on that African safari and see those amazing animals in the horizon. I mean, what a sight. We have opportunities like that every day right here in your day-to-day -day life, and I think we miss them because of the way we feel. So let's start with something we know, the United States. In 1987, or 85 actually, the United States government started tracking obesity trends. And when I pulled this information off the CDC website, I'm telling you, I hope it impacts you the way that it did me. I was astounded. I just sat there and I had, to, I had to go through it again and I had to go through it again for it to make sense to me. So in 1985, we started tracking, 1986. And you notice Mississippi's not on the map yet because some of the states in the white, there's no data. So if you see a state with, that's white, it's no data. And the darker blue is from 10 to 14% obesity, okay? So I'm just gonna click through these pretty quickly. It's year to year, what's happened. 1990, Mississippi shows up. We're already leading our nation at 10 to 14% obesity. The very next year, 91, they had to create another category for us. We were at 15 to 19%. I mean, to me, this just looks like, uh, we should be playing Jaws music here. Um, in 1997, we're greater than 20%. 98, 99. 2001, we're greater than 25%. 2005, we're greater than 30%. 30 and here we are, 2010. The state of Mississippi is now at 33.6% obesity. That's not counting the people that are overweight. That's obesity. That's 30 pounds or more over your ideal body weight. So 119 million Americans are overweight or obese. That's a tremendous impact on not only how we feel, 
but the cost of that health care. If this trend continues like it is, we will not be able to afford our health care. So as I said, obesity is 30, more, 30 or more pounds being overweight. So you live in Mississippi, but that's not who you are, right? We all make choices every day about the lifestyle that we're going to lead. So before you go on a trip, it's important, or before you go anywhere, it's important to know where you are, right? You have to know where you are so you know where, how to get where you're going. Have you ever been lost? I mean like really, really lost? I have. I'm a runner, and in 1997, I moved to a new community, Diamond Head, Mississippi. Anybody familiar with Diamond Head? It's a resort community. All of the um, street names are Hawaiian, and they're all spelled very similarly. There's a lot of traffic circles in Diamond Head, so it's easy to get lost. Well, I set out one July 4th to go on a 20-mile run in training for a marathon, and I had a master plan. At mile 18, I was going to call and order a pizza. By the time I got home, the pizza would be there. I could eat my pizza, watch fireworks. It was going to be a great 4th of July. So I get out. On mile 18, I do call up and I order pizza. And I was also on a traffic circle. And as I ordered my pizza, I made a turn on the traffic circle thinking I was headed back home. I started looking around and it was getting dark and I noticed the houses really didn't look that familiar. And I thought, well, I must have made a mistake on the traffic circle. So I headed back to the traffic circle. I thought I corrected my mistake, started running again, only to realize these houses don't look familiar either. I'm completely and utterly lost. I don't know how to tell anyone how to get to me because I have no idea where I am. And so yeah, I'm thinking, okay, the pizza guy's gonna be at my house. This is not gonna be good. And so I called 911. 911, here I am. I told him my little sad story. I'm lost. <laughs> These are my street, you know, intersections. So they were sweet. They came and got me and they brought me home. I got home about the same time as the pizza guy. My kids were so confused. They were like, why is mom being brought home by the police? And we have pizza. I mean, so um, anyway, have you ever felt that way with your health care? You think you're doing the right thing and you're just going and going. And then you realize I'm not getting any better or maybe I'm getting worse. I think we've all felt that way a time or two. So I have to tell you, the next month, our, our community was very proud of their security services, and they sent out a newsletter, and they listed all of the infractions that the security had to respond to, and it had lost runner one. Luckily, they did not put my name, so, but my children do not let me forget that at all. So here you are. This is what I'm learning in my master's program. This is actually the metabolic process of what your body goes through to metabolize. It looks simple, right? There's so many factors that play into how we metabolize things and how our bodies work. It's not a one-size-fits-all. And so it's important that you know where you are. And as Christy said, it's, the testing is important. The testing helps us know how to help you better. If we didn't know the intolerances that she had, then, you know, ALCAT testing helped us be able to help her in a different way. Otherwise, we would be just guessing. So know where you are. Um, the health continuum is interesting because as I talked about the lady that age 50 and her body just fell apart, um, it doesn't just happen that way. You have to have 70% organ decline in order to have a symptom. So think about that. If you have 70% of organ decline before you have a symptom, then you could have diabetes for five years before you're diagnosed. You could have high blood pressure. If you're not checking your blood pressure, you could have blood pressure elevations for many years without knowing that. And by the time you're diagnosed, you have end organ disease with your kidneys and, um, and other organs. So it's very important to understand that continuum. Otherwise, you hear people say all the time, well, I've, I've never go to the doctor. I never, you know, because they don't understand that there are certain things that we monitor that may benefit your health in the long run. So if you're already feeling sick and tired, you definitely need to spend some time and um, look at what your health goals are and figure out, okay, how do I figure out where I am? And then where do I want to go? How do I want to be in the next 10, 20, 30, 50 years with my health? So invest in yourself. Invest in finding out where you are so that you know where to go.